On this week's show, we have a one-on-one -on -one interview with this year's Aldo Leopold Award recipient Sheridan Snyder. We have a look inside this year's International Night and Aiden Duffy reports from Girls Varsity Swimming. Lawrence Hill's 10-minute newscast begins right now. From the studios inside the Lawrence Hill School's historic Pop Hall, this is L10 with Guy L. Phillips. Hello and welcome to the show. On Wednesday, fifth formers Noah Harrington and Khadiv McIntosh signed NCAA National Letters of Intent, continuing their careers as student athletes. Next school year, Harrington will play football as an offensive lineman for Northern Michigan University, and McIntosh will play soccer for Syracuse University. On January 27th, Boys and Girls Indoor Track and Field hosted the 14th annual Ed Pareda Invitational. The over 40 members on the team competed against 32 different schools. The girls' 4x200 relay team consisted of Grace Chong, Izzy Huang, Irene Ross, and anchor Ariel Claxon. They are ranked 5th in the state and placed 4th overall in the meet with a time of 1 minute 48 seconds. Sophia Kai, Cindy Jin, Divya Kumar, Adia Weaver, James Wellmayer, and Johnny Yu received Scholastic Art and Writing Awards in the Northeast New Jersey region. These artists were recognized for some of their outstanding paintings, sketches, and photographs. Lawrence Hill's student body and faculty fanned out and spent the morning of January 20th volunteering at one of 42 different nonprofits located throughout New Jersey and Philadelphia. Fifth former Ahana Chatterjee went, to, went with the art club and described her day spent at PJ Hill Elementary School as a great experience sharing something that she loves with the kids. On Wednesday, girls varsity swimming had their state championships. Our reporter Aiden Duffy brings us a story from the pool. Thanks, Gael. It's a very competitive and as you can hear, very loud environment behind me. Uh, this is the girls' state meet. Uh, it's a field of almost 22 different schools. And the Big Red Girls Swimming has performed very solid so far, uh, quali qualifying as seventh in the field. There has been outstanding performances from juniors Ali Demas and juniors Krista Soa. Ali Demas qualified for Easterns with her performance in the 500 meter free, and junior Krista Soa uh, PR'd in the 100 meter relay. Overall, a fantastic day for girls big red swimming. I'm here with Coach Ferguson. So Coach, what are your thoughts on the season so far? Um, it's been a really good season. It's a bit of a season of transition for us. We had a lot of uh, talented swimmers over the previous years that have just recently graduated. But the thing in swimming is we swim throughout the year um, to train and to learn. And each of the meets along the way is an opportunity to figure out how to swim at the end of the season. So right now we're at our championship meet. People are dropping big times and they're finding they're swimming their fastest times. And that's, that's kind of what we want to do. It's, it's I'm here with girls swim team captain, senior Eva Blake. Uh, so great race, Eva. How does it feel to drop a second off your time in such a big meet? I think it's really exciting because we've been working really hard towards this meet all year. Um, and we get to swim in a lot of dual meets throughout the season. But uh, this is a meet that we really rest for, that we get excited for. So I think it means a lot to drop time, particularly in this setting, because we've been working so hard for this meet in particular. Uh, what is it like competing in such a loud and competitive environment like this one? Uh, it's really exciting to have so many people here and I think it brings out a lot of team spirit with everyone around us and also our team in particular. Um, I think both the boys and girls teams get really, like, really excited for the other people swimming so I think it adds to the excitement of racing and it adds to the excitement of swimming in general. Back to you Gael. Thank you, Aiden. Sheridan Snyder, noted biotechnology entrepreneur and philanthropist, was awarded the Lawrenceville Medal. This medal, also known as the Aldo Leopold Award, is the highest honor the school bestows on an alumnus. Eliza Korn had a chance to interview him in the Duffy Room. You mentioned um, the fact that Lawrenceville really gives uh, each individual student the tools necessary to become entrepreneurs, and I was wondering what specific tools you were referencing. Well, I think the, the, the tools, the nice thing about a Lawrenceville experience is uh, you have a, a, a broad number of things you develop. The ability to get along with others. You have your, your house experience. You have your athletic experience. Uh, and then uh, and the other thing at Lawrenceville, you're, you're among a very uh, strong level of, of young people that have a lot of skill and uh, intellectually are strong. And so you have to raise your own capabilities to uh, the ability to uh, compete with that uh, uh, type of environment. So the foundation I think you get at Lawrenceville is, uh, is uh, 
young teenagers, 14 to, to 17 and so forth. It's a very important time because you then, you're, you're on the college, you're starting to look at your future and the impact and where your future is going to take you. And so I always look at a, a, a good secondary education, such as Lawrenceville, which I think is the best in the, in the country. Um, it's just a, a wonderful foundation. Obviously, Lawrenceville has significantly changed since you've last been here. Is there one thing that, from your time here, that you would hope to be continued, uh, a theme or characteristic of Lawrenceville that you particularly enjoyed? Well, s certainly uh, the things that uh, I've carried on um, in, my, in my business life, um, I think I use as a model for discussions um, I'm, I'm, I'm in favor of, of group uh, discussions and meetings where people can, uh, can let go of their ideas and, and suggestions. And I think the, uh, the Harkness table at Lawrenceville was uh, uh, a very strong uh, uh, basis for me to, to realize how important a, a smaller group within an educational academic uh, environment is, is very, very good. So. Uh, I've taken that in, uh, in the way I work with my fellow workers. Um, are there any current business ventures that you're exploring now? Um, I'm developing a uh, molecular diagnostic uh, company uh, that is, uh, actually has a specialty test for uh, being able to identify a biomarker that uh, identifies a very uh, specific uh, deadly form of cancer. And then in uh, Tyrogenics, um, another company, we, we have two therapies coming out for, for cancer. One treats all solid tumors by destroying the, uh, the blood vessels that are supplying blood to the tumor and thereby killing uh, the tumor. And then another uh, therapy for, for lung cancer. And there is one more, which is a, a clinical trial we have for macular degeneration for treating macular degeneration instead of the needle in the eye, which is how it's treated today, uh, ours is a, is a pill. So it's a, a lot more comfortable way to treat macular degeneration. Thank you, Eliza. On January 22nd, the Diversity Council hosted the second annual International Night. The night began in the Irwin Dining Center when students and faculty enjoyed food from around the world. The festivities continued in the Kirby Arts Center with a show with a variety of performances. Here is Bianca Mangravit with that report. So today I'm here with two of the co-hosts, Siana and Azam, and we're going to ask them a few questions about the show. Um, just to start off, um, what made you want to get involved with this event and this whole program? Um, well, as diversity rep, I actually had the unique opportunity of working with Tron Kim Sr. and Amit Malik, last year's diversity rep, on putting this international night together for the first time last year. So this year is kind of just a round two, and we got a really great response last year. And we think that it, there's so many opportunities to celebrate our international community, so yeah. Well, yeah, I had a pretty great opportunity to be a part of the Diversity Council, so I got to work with Chisholm. And uh, in December, Siana and a few others with me and Ms. Kim Senior, we went down to Florida for SDLC, which is a conference uh, focusing on diversity issues uh, in our community. And I think uh, based off that, we got a a lot of great background to be able to start this event and show off what our community has. I think all of the student performances were definitely a highlight. It's really interesting to see our classmates showcase parts of their culture and such an intimate part of themselves, where they grew up and part of that identity with yeah, us. Sure. So I think that was the best part for me. We had some groups that were singing and we had some dances and there was even some spoken word and we had some, we were really lucky to have some outside groups come in and show off other parts of uh, the culture that's represented at Lawrenceville. So I think that was a great diverse group of acts which uh, we were really lucky to have. Thank you, Bianca. That is our show for Thursday, February 4th, 2016. From all of us here at L10, thank you so much for watching. Good night. Thank you, Mr. Snyder, for your wonderful remarks. Um, we know you were a great tennis player when you were here and uh, the captain at the University of Virginia, so we would like to present you with the Lawrenceville tennis jacket and jersey.
Please wear a big red flag.